Today, we're going to take a look at a formula function inside of Notion called the slice function. So the slice function is something you can use inside of Notion's formula. And I'm going to show you two different scenarios where you may want to use the slice function. This is going to be kind of a sneak peek into the function, understanding really how it works. So it's going to be rather quick. If you want to look at other use cases, I created two other videos about how to create the progress bar in Notion, something that utilizes the slice function very much. If you just want to learn and watch, that's fine, but you can also duplicate the page in the description and follow along with me. So let's just get right into it. The slice function is a function inside of Notion's formulas. And a formula can be created inside of a database table or really any database. And I have two databases here and you can duplicate this page in the description to follow along. The first I'm going to look at is daily pages. So daily pages is simply just a table where every page in the database is a date. And each date in the title has the same format or syntax where we have two digits, dash, two digits, dash, four digits. Now I'm going to be looking at month, date, year. You could also look at it as date, month, year when we get into it. I also have three different formulas where I'm going to extract the month, the date, and the year in the title. Now the reason for this is maybe you want to create some daily pages in a table, but you don't want to use a date property, but you still want to sort by the title, you will have to slice some of these numbers in order to sort properly. So this is a bit of a niche use case. This is actually one that I created for someone and figured would be a great way to introduce you to the slice function. So if this is the case, we want to do this. I'm going to open up one of these pages and take this apart. So what the slice function allows you to do, let's first go into year. I'm going to slice out of this string the year 2022. So how a formula box is set up is at the top we have all of our properties, name, month, date. We're currently in a year. And below that are all of the functions you can use. Slice function is set up like this. Slice, and inside the parentheses, a string we're going to slice from, comma, where we're going to start the slice, comma, where we're going to end it. So we're going to have specific coordinates within the string to slice. For example, if the string is hello world, and I just want to see hello, well, I'd start at index zero or before the string, and I'd end at O, oh, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth character. So I'd replace this end index with the number five. But what if I want to extract world? You would think that you would start at capital W, which is the seventh character in the string, and then end at the 11th, which is the lowercase d. But this actually doesn't work. It takes away our w. And on the 11th character, it does include the lowercase d. So kind of think of it like this. You want to start the character before the one you want to see. So spaces do count as characters, and this is the sixth character. So I will start at the sixth, but not including the sixth, and end on the 11th, the lowercase d. If I just want to return LO, I would start at the character before, character one, and I would end at character five. Now what I wanna do is use our name property as the string. So I'm going to delete this string and the quotes, and I'm going to replace it with the name property. So if I go down to properties, I can just simply click on name to insert it inside. What I wanna do is slice out this year. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then end at the end of the string, which is seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is one way I can do it, and I can get 2022, or I could simply get rid of this 10 and just have a six. What I'm saying is start at character six, this dash, and it is assumed that I want you to end at the last character, which is this two. So if we are sorting these pages, I do want to turn this 2022 into a number. 
It looks like a number, but we are slicing from a string, so we're actually returning a string as well. And strings don't sort in the same way as numbers. So to convert a string to a number, we're going to use the function to number, and that's to capital N number. We'll nest this inside of two parentheses, that's the open and the end. Let's do the same thing with the month, the first two characters. Slice in name, click, comma. I'm going to start at the zero index before the string and at the second, giving me 10. And again, I can nest this inside of the two number function to convert it into a number. For the date, this may be the month for you. I'm going to slice again the name, and I'm going to start at character three, this dash, and end at character five. And again, I can turn this into a number. Okay, so now we've taken this apart. I don't really want to see every one of these properties, so I'm going to hide, always hide, always hide, and always hide. Go back to daily pages, and now I can sort. So right now the dates are not sorted in order. So what I wanna do is sort by the year first, and then add another sort in this box for the month, and then the date, and it should be sorted properly. And then of course, from here, I would hide all of these properties in this view as well. And then maybe even change the view by clicking on the database header and edit view, layout, gallery. Maybe do not see the card preview and card size small. Now we have a nice different way of looking at daily pages with a way to sort dates in titles without using a date property. Let's go back and move on to another way to use the slice function. And that is generating a star rating or a five star rating. And we're gonna to go to the next page called daily survey, where in every page in this table is a new day with the date in the title like before. And we also have three different select properties where you can choose between a one and five star rating, for example, for your mood, productivity, and workout. You can also add more select properties, but I wanted to show you an instance where we are generating something like a progress bar functioning in a very similar way, where we're seeing a star rating increase. And we're going to see those stars inside of the overall formula column. I do have a video more about progress bars down in the description, but basically to use slice in this instance, so we have our string comma, first index and end index. Instead of grabbing the title like we did before, I'm instead going to copy these symbols up at the top inside of the description go back into overall, and I'm going to paste those five stars into the quotation. Change the end index to one, two, three, four, five, the star rating will go up. And again, we're starting at index zero or before the string and ending at five, which is the last star. I'm going to replace this end index with a calculation and let's just click out of here and go into the average column where we can figure out how to calculate the average star rating between these three properties. So how I would go about doing this is using a function called a length. And length is going to allow you to count the number of characters in a given property. So inside of length, I can say mood, and it will give me four for four stars. And then I'm just going to add them all together. So length of, and in the parentheses, I can click on property, plus the length of workout. To find the average, I'm going to nest 
this entire calculation inside of parentheses to isolate it, and then divide this by the number of properties, which is three. So pretty basic calculation to get an average. Let's click on one of these, and I'm going to copy the formula from average onto my clipboard, go back to the star rating, and I'm going to replace the end index with this new calculation. So I'm just going to delete five and just paste in what was in my clipboard. And you'll notice that those star ratings have now populated. So I could just delete this average property, delete property, because I only need the overall star rating. But if you want to keep the average, I recommend rounding this number. So I'm going to click through. And to round numbers, you can use three different functions. You can use the floor function, the round function, or the seal function. I would recommend using the floor function. So we're going to nest this entire calculation inside of floor. So this is rounding those numbers down to a number between one and five. You can make it a little bit more exacting and inside of floor between these two open parentheses, say 100 times, and then at the very end divided by 100. So this gives a more specific average, and that might be useful. This is a basic way to look at something like a progress bar with the slice function. If you wanna know more about tracking progress with something like this, I recommend looking at my progress bar video linked below. Let's just go right into the outro. I hope this cleared up some confusion around the slice function that you may have had and maybe gave you some inspiration about things you want to do with your Notion workspace using a function like this. So with that being said, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.